So how exactly did we get here? Since when was there a lack of positive portrayals of black people in the media? When was black history and culture commodified for our entertainment? Before we examine the role of blacks in the media, we must understand the power dynamics from which they came from. The noble savage. Typically associated with Native Americans, the term was first used in John Dryden's 17th century heroic play, The Conquest of Granada. Savage was used to indicate a wild man and later symbolized nature's gentleman, untainted by Western civilization and represented man's innate good nature. However, in 1860, John Crawford and James Hunt mounted a defense of British imperialism based on scientific racism where their core beliefs were the undeniable differences in racial character, principle among which was the very great difference in intellectual capacity. And any positive portrayal of an indigenous person was considered unrealistic and threatened irrationality on civilization. Then came stereotypes of Africans and African Americans since the institution of slavery. From the colonial era to the American Revolution, propaganda surrounding African Americans was used for and against the issue of slavery. And around 1813, T.D. Rice and Daniel Emmett were able to successfully create the label of Blacks as buffoons, which paved the way for minstrel shows and subsequent caricatures of Black people. Rice became one of the first American artists to use physiognomic distortions, toothy smiles, and oversized red lips in the dehumanizing caricatures of black people. But there are many other historical stereotypes of black people. Then came Rudyard Kipling's poem, The White Man's Burden. Originally about the Philippine-American War, the poem exhorts the reader to embark on the enterprise of empire. However, American imperialists understood the phrase white man's burden to justify imperialism in the name of manifest destiny. Ostensibly, the phrase became synonymous with Eurocentric racism and the belief that Western civilization was the way to civilize the third world. So what does that mean for portrayals of black people in new media? It means that there isn't a good historical precedent for positive portrayals in popular media. As if repeating history, real world issues surrounding race relations become racialized. Abstract and often virtuous concepts like morality come to be associated with white people over non-white people. And as a result, it leaves black people with little room for character development outside the realm of moral depravity or one-dimensional personality or character quirks. American history and popular media has reduced black people to aggressive and often animalistic tropes and stereotypes akin to those in the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries. News media tends to showcase black crime more than ever, and with the lifetime prison likelihood of black men being one in three and making up more than 40% of the prison population, these negative stereotypes stay at the forefront, becoming embedded into American society. Because these stereotypes make processing information easier, they become major influencers of how we live and interact and the content of things we create. Movies, TV shows, and video games then become filters as to how we interpret the world around us and include aspects of what we encounter in the real world. A study by the Children Now organization in 2001 found that 83% of African American males were portrayed in sports-oriented games, while 86% of African American females were used as props and bystanders. By 2007, the number of black people increased with the popularity of urban and street games, although portrayals have been consistently narrow, verbally and physically aggressive, hypermasculine, and extraordinarily muscular. So we get the big scary black man. Come on in. Don't be shy. Luther, would you be so kind as to take these ladies' coats? Oh, don't be afraid of a big friend here. Luther is just another android that I helped. He keeps me company in this 
big, empty old house. The hardened criminal. Can a low come up in your crib? Man, fuck you. I'll see you at work. Oh, nigga, don't hate me because I'm beautiful, nigga. Maybe if you got rid of that old yee-yee-ass haircut you got, you'd get some bitches on your dick. Oh, better yet, maybe Tanisha will call your dog ass if she ever stop fucking with that brain surgeon the lawyer she fucking with. Nigga. Or the angry it's black about woman. The angry black woman. Now look at the image of African American women who are on television. Politically, you have uh, Maxine uh, uh, Waters of, uh, of California, a liberal Democrat. She's always angry every time she gets on television. Cynthia McKinney, the former congresswoman from Georgia, was another angry black woman. And who are the black women you see on the local news at night in, in, in cities all over, the, uh, all over the country? They're usually angry about something. They've had a son who's been shot in a drive-by shooting. Uh, they are, they're angry at uh, Bush or something. So you don't really have a profile of uh, non-angry black women, of whom there are quite a few. Cultural production serve as an effective way to synthesize the world around us and allows others a glimpse into individual and collective grievances that shape human experiences, but it shouldn't be done to the detriment and alienation of an entire race of people. It's irresponsible.